Hello everyone, Peter Harris here with Commercial Property Advisors. I want to share something with you today. A while back, I produced this video where my apartment building caught on fire. In fact, the video link will show right on the screen here. But it was such a huge fire, okay, huge fire, that there was a $1 million claim. Okay, it's a huge fire. I had six fire trucks, two ambulances. The Red Cross came out because we had to find a place for half the tenants. So 50 tenants have to move out. Right? So you have to put them in the hotels. And Red Cross helped out. It actually made the 10 o'clock news and the morning paper. That's how big it was. Remember, six fire trucks in this decent-sized town. And uh, there was no cash flow for any of us for six months. So I would say this was that night when I got the phone call, it was a complete disaster. Okay? Complete disaster. It's horrible. But guess what? I had or we had insurance. But wait. We had great insurance, and this is what having great insurance uh, does for you. Okay, so our uh, insurance covered this complete disaster. From the ground up, we built, we had to build back up the property, and insurance covered everything. Uh, 30 days later, the insurance company uh, paid out us to us $40,000 a month to cover the missing rents on the property. So we didn't miss any mortgage payments at all and we're able to keep up with all the bills. Uh, there was no money out of pocket. You know, with every insurance, there's a deductible. On this property, we had a $50,000 deductible. That came out of $1 million, okay? So nothing out of our own pocket. Uh, after uh, we fixed everything up, the units were nicer, so we achieved higher rents. And as you know, as the rents go up, so does the property value. So the property value went up after the fire, right? So we went from a complete disaster to complete restoration because of insurance, but no, because of great insurance. So in this video, I want to share with you that when you're purchasing a commercial property, you need to have insurance, but you need to have great insurance. So in this video, I want to share with you the five tips, five insurance tips for commercial real estate. Let's begin with number one. All right, let's start here with tip number one. Tip number one is, what I call commercial insurance for dummies. Okay, so the, the absolute basics you have to know. Uh, many of our students are just, you know, just starting out and you, they need to know the basics on getting insurance. So you start off by knowing just the basic definitions. So three basic definitions, premium, deductible, and coverages, okay? The premium is the cost per year for your insurance. You have to know that. Number two is your deductible. Deductible is the amount of money you pay before the insurance company will pay for a loss. And then coverage is, is what incidents are that happen on the property or to the property, what's covered. Okay? So you need to, know, need to know at least these three things when you're looking at commercial insurance for commercial properties. Okay? Next is not only know the basic definitions, you must have the basic coverages. So there are three basic coverages that every commercial property owner needs to have, okay? You need to have these three. Number one is commercial property insurance coverage. You know, something happens to the property, right? If wall falls down or car runs into it or something, so it protects uh, the property itself. Next is general liability. Let's say your employee does something stupid or you do something stupid and you need to have yourself covered and be liable for damages that someone will possibly sue you for, okay? And number three, have business income uh, coverage or loss of rent coverage. As I mentioned before, a few minutes ago, uh, when we had our fire and we had to move out 50 tenants, you know, uh, many of those units were not rent producing because they had to be built back up. The insurance company wrote us checks every single month to cover for those lost rents. We were able to pay the mortgage, insurance taxes, utilities, uh, employees, everything. Okay? All right. And then um, also, it depends on where you live, right? I'm in California, I don't need wind insurance. I need flood and theft, but not wind. So if you're like in Florida or in Texas, you're probably gonna need both wind and, and, and flood insurance, okay? All right, so it just depends on where you are. So these are extra. All right, so that's tip number one, know the basics, right? Tip number two, let me share with you, we're gonna go there next is, sometimes it makes sense not to file a claim, right? Let's do tip number two next. All right, here we are, tip number two. Well, in my two, over two decades of writing checks for insurance and filing claims 
for over 20 years, I have learned this, tip number two, that sometimes it makes sense not to file a claim for damages. Here is a prime example. If you have a flood or minor water damage and it's going to cost you several thousands of dollars, you may want to just write that check yourself. And the reason why is insurance companies will raise your premium after a water claim, guaranteed, okay? So water is so intrusive and can lead to further problems that insurance companies will put you kind of on their warning list, right? And, then, and because of this, they will look for ways to cancel your, your insurance policy after they pay you because of water damage, okay? Been there and done that, okay? Now, if you can, as I said before, pay for out of pocket, okay? So you can avoid these type of things, all right? So again, sometimes it makes sense not to file uh, an insurance claim for uh, things like this. All right, let's go to tip number three. Tip number three, I'm gonna share with you five ways to reduce your insurance costs. Let's go there next. All right, here we are, tip number three. Tip number three is five ways to reduce your insurance costs per year, okay? So uh, number one is don't be loyal to your insurance company, okay? Now, what I mean by this is the person selling you the policy is not the same person writing you a check when there is a claim, all right? So get that straight in your mind, okay? So we are loyal to our insurance broker. Our insurance broker takes our property, he shops it to different insurance carriers every year when the policy you know, is due, when it runs out. So we shop annually for the best deal. So shop annually for the best deal. We get the same coverage, we get a lower price depending on which company our insurance broker takes us to, okay? So uh, don't be loyal, shop annually with your insurance broker, okay? Uh, B is to raise your deductible. The higher the deductible, the lower the premium, okay? So like in a small apartment building, you may have a, uh, let's say a $3,000 premium uh, with a deductible of, of, of $1,000, okay? If you raise the deductible to $5,000, Right, it's going to reduce your premium probably five hundred dollars or three to four hundred, maybe five hundred dollars per year. That's huge, right? Okay, so raise your deductible is the second way. The third way is to improve the safety, security, and the exterior uh, appearance of the property. Now, you probably don't know this, but when you have a commercial property and you have commercial insurance, they have uh, field inspectors who drive by the property and look for things, right? They'll look if uh, the tree is hanging over the roof and they will write up a note and send it to you and say, clear this up or we will cancel your insurance. So, so what you want to do is be proactive and make sure that the, the perimeter is safe, that there's that maybe security cameras, there's an alarm, and the appearance is beautiful so that the insurance will drop. Okay, it's one way of doing that. The fourth way is if, you're, if it's an apartment building, require the tenants to get renter's insurance, okay? So this renter's insurance is a, is a policy that the renters pay for themselves, right, every year, and it's really, really inexpensive, okay? Really inexpensive, but what it does, it covers the, the insides of the unit, all their personal belongings, so if there's ever a fire or something, their insurance will cover that first before yours, okay? So if you have your tenants get renter's insurance, your policy premiums will drop. Okay, and the last one is to simply ask your insurance carrier for discounts. Okay, we have, like I said, we, we use insurance and insurance broker, and he shops us around, and we're constantly asking, you know, how can we get discounts to reduce uh, our insurance premiums? Okay, so those are five very practical ways. Let's go to tip number four. All right, here we are, tip number four. Now, Tip number four is rather technical, so bear with me for a second, okay? So tip number four is to watch out for what we call the deadly co-insurance clause. So it sounds friendly, right? Co-insurance, like they're in it with you. That is so far from the truth, okay? Insurance companies are not in it with you, okay? They're in it to make money. Now, uh, co-insurance clause, well, the first time you find out what it is, it may be too late, okay? Let me explain. It's a rule to combat against you being underinsured, okay? So let's say you have a claim, okay? And if you don't have enough insurance, a formula is used. They will use a formula 
that diminishes your payout. That means your loss is not fully reimbursed. So actually, you know, in, in practical terms, what that means is you are penalized for not having enough insurance. Now, why in the world did they, they didn't tell you this in, in advance at, from day one? I don't know. Maybe your broker wasn't good or maybe you were too cheap. Okay? I don't know what it was, but this co-insurance cause can be deadly. And again, uh, the first time you learn of it, it may be too late. So my tip to you is to watch out and learn and, and understand what your co-insurance clause is in your commercial policy. All of them have it. Okay, all right, so let's finish up. Let's go to tip number five. All right, here's uh, number five. Okay, lastly, tip number five. And if you do this one correctly, you do this one correctly, it will be not only be advantageous for you, it will save you a lot of money and make you a lot of money. Let me explain, okay? So tip number five is when you file a claim for damages, like my fire, right? Request for the claim money to be sent to you and not your contractor or property manager. Okay, this will, let me show you what happened, okay? So we had a student that had a, a fire in the upstairs unit and uh, he got a check for $75,000. He went out and showed his property manager, okay, fix this, Mr. Property Manager, give me a quote. So the property manager gave him a quote for $75,000 to fix that one unit. He showed it to me, I go, no way, it's not going to cost $75,000 to fix that one unit. Go out and get your own quote. So the quote came back from different from a contractor for fifty thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars less than what the proper manager quoted. Now the proper manager, who has since been fired, uh, was going to charge our students seventy five thousand dollars, right? Pay the contractor fifty thousand and pocket twenty five thousand dollars for himself, right? That's what he's going to do. So I had the proper manager get his own contractor, right, with a bid for fifty thousand dollars, so our student can pocket himself $25,000 extra, right? That's his money that he used to uh, do some exterior work and interior work to make the property even better, okay? So if you can do this, this will not only save you money, but make you a whole lot more money. Got it? All right, so that was five tips, but you know what? I have a bonus tip that I'm gonna share with you. So let's quickly do that next. All right, real quick, let me go over with you this bonus tip. Okay, and the bonus tips, uh, the bonus tip is questions that you should ask your commercial insurance agent while you are getting uh, quotes for your policy. You should ask these questions. And the reason I bring this up is a lot of commercial agents, they go too fast, right? Insurance agents, they go too fast and they don't do a thorough enough job with our students in giving them the proper coverage. So these questions are set up to slow them down and see what they're giving us. Okay, all right. So uh, the first question is to ask the agent, does this policy cover flooding? A lot of policies don't, and you may need it, okay? Number two, does this policy cover wind and hail damage? Again, a lot of, po a lot of policies don't, and it's extra, and it costs a lot, okay? So make sure to uh, ask if you need it or not, okay, and what the cost is. And number three, um, are there any discounts you can apply for, right? A lot of times you can put, um, you know, security gates or security cameras or do certain things on the properties to get significant discounts on the property, but you have to ask. Again, this is, these questions slow the agent down to give you the best service and best coverage possible. Remember coinsurance, right? Okay. And lastly, ask them this question. And this will really, this really stumps them and it really, it really makes them back up and make sure they give you the right coverage. It is, what is not coverage, not covered in this policy? Okay, so ask that question and that will really have them think to make sure they're covering you properly. Got it? Okay, all right. So I hope you enjoyed this video on commercial insurance. If you like this video, click the like button. Also, if you want more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching everyone, and I'll see you at the next video.